Welcome to the MMT studio. I'm Christina Fugis with Mole Making Technology, and today I am here with Scott Clark with Husky Technologies. Hi, Scott. How are we doing? Good. All right, so I know personally that mold makers are what fuels Husky's hot runners. Yep. That they're, they just know mold making inside and out. And mostly because we recently did an Ask the Experts for a four part series on the yep. different aspects of Husky's hot runner technology. So I know very well how technical and educational Husky is when it comes to that technology. Right. So, um, but I want to talk a little bit more about preventative maintenance. Sure. I mean, as you know, mold making technology is engineer, build, maintain. Maintenance is one of the hottest topics. It crosses both the mold builder and the molder. So let's dig into that a little bit. All right. So there are definitely maintenance practices for hot runner systems that help molders operate at optimal performance level. So why don't you take us through a few of the key steps with regards to temperature control setups and settings and recommended procedures to minimize downtime and to extend the hot runner and the controller life. Sure. Sure. Well, I'll start with the controller. So with the controller, um, you want to make sure it's clean, right? You want to take it apart once, maybe twice a year, take the cards out of it, make sure all the dust is out of it, make sure the fans are operating correctly because heat and dirt will kill a controller, right? It doesn't matter what controller it is, but you want to make sure it's clean. But with the hot runner system itself, you want to get in there, you want to check the seals if it's a hot tip, you want to make sure your tips are within spec, make sure that everything is running correctly. Once you take that system apart and put it back together, you can use our controller to use a mold diagnostics and with the diagnostics, it'll go through, it'll give you all the temperatures, make sure all your, your wiring is correct, it'll make sure your heaters are working, your thermocouples are working, and once you run that, you can also print it out. You can get it on the USB stick, take it, print it out, then you can send it back out on the floor with the nice. hot runner system to make sure everything's working correctly and everybody knows it. Data, data, right? Exactly, data. exactly. All right, so yeah. let's move over to hot runner controllers and yeah. valve gates. Yeah. So how can a shop take advantage of servo control to improve mold function? Well, servo control, it, 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 it's, it's great, right? Because you get feedback from servo motors. It'll tell you what's going on. You can see on the screen where it's at in its motion and its profile. Um, so you can use it for quenching operations. You can use it for ejection. You can use it for all kinds of different operations. Uh, it takes the place of pneumatics. It's cleaner. It takes the place of hydraulics also. Uh, cleaner, you get the feedback. It's a great solution. Is there a particular challenge that you see with your customers over and over again that you have to, whether it's on the maintenance side, the server control side, that is recurring? Yeah, I mean, a lot of customers ask for training, which we're more than happy to provide, right? Whether it comes to the servo controls, whether it comes to the hot runner system, um, if they're unfamiliar with it, if they're new to the hot runner system, if they're new to the, the newer style controllers, right? You're used to using the, uh, the, the older style where you're just getting the temperature reading, you're not getting all the feedback, all the data collection that you're seeing now, we're more than happy to come in and give that training. Yeah, so that, uh, training's big anywhere. It is, Especially it's when you huge. can't find the people, and people don't want to take the time. Yep. I think they rely more and more on the technology developers oh, to, for that support, definitely. they need that. Yep. All right, what benefits are there of mold electrification? Well, with mold electrification, right, compressed air isn't cheap for one, right? Yep, yep. So if you're trying to run your slides or any other operations with pneumatics, it's loud and it's expensive. Um, you get into the, the servo motors, uh, you're getting that feedback. Uh, we had one example of where it'll help save a mold, right? Servo motors give you that feedback. We had a customer that, was, that built a brand new mold that at their first sampling, it's running along and all of a sudden the system alarms, right? Yeah. They take it down, they take it apart, they find that on the unscrewing cores, it wasn't scoring up yet, but the cores were getting shiny, meaning it was rubbing, right? So it's, it's saving you money at that point by letting you know, hey, something's happening here, let's, let's stop and let's figure it out before something breaks. Pneumatics, hydraulics, they're just gonna ram right through okay. it until it can't move anymore. Got it, got it. All right, so off the cuff kind of question. You know we're celebrating yep. 25 years. Yep. Is there a technology or an innovation when it comes to hot runners in the past 25 years that stands out to you? Well, for me, servo control, right? Okay. I mean, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep banging on okay. this, but we've got uh, the UltraSync E, right? So it's, it's a servo op, uh, servo actuated valve gate system, right? Um, it's giving you the feedback. It's letting it's a plate actuated system that opens and closes all the valve stems at exactly the same time. So when you're in medical molding, you're looking for cleanliness, you're looking for repeatability, you're looking to make sure everything is working exactly the same. 
that it's going to do that for you. And I've been I've been doing this for 26 years now. Okay. 11 years as a mold maker. You know, 27 years, 16 years in husky. Wow. So I've seen a lot, and yep. I've seen a lot of hot runner systems, right? And and just the way that servos have come into the industry, it's made a huge difference. All right. Last but not least, what excites you the most about the future of mold making? There's been so many changes over the past 27 years. It's hard to say where this industry is going to go. That's right? exciting in itself. It is. It is. I've been coming to these shows since I started my career and just seeing the changes at the shows and the new technologies. And it's just, you, you never know what to expect. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Well, thank you, Scott. My pleasure. Good to see you. you. All right. For everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com.